welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Hello everyone, if you've ever wondered how scientists measure the infectiousness of a virus, today's video is for you. We're going to explore the TCID-50 assay, which researchers use to quantify the infectious virus titer in a sample, providing insights into the virus's potency and behavior. The TCID-50 assay, or Tissue Culture Infectious Dose 50, measures the smallest concentration of virus that will infect 50% of the cell cultures in a sample. Briefly, the process involves inoculating cells with various dilutions of the virus preparation. As you can see here, we have prepared dilutions ranging from 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 8 of the virus. In this 96 well plate, each well contains a monolayer of cells. We introduce separate dilutions of virus into each row. For instance, all the wells in row A contain the 10 to the minus 2 dilutions, and all the wells in row B contain the 10 to the minus 3 dilutions, and so forth. After inoculating, we incubate the plate to allow sufficient time for the virus to infect the cells. We then observe each well for signs of infection. Typically, this is indicated by cytopathic effects, which are changes in the cell's appearance caused by the virus and observable under a microscope. Some common cytopathic effects include cell death, syncytia formation, and cell shrinkage and detachment. But let's take a closer look at how we perform the TCID-50 assay and practice in the lab. First, we need to prepare the virus dilutions on a 96 well plate. We start by adding media to each well. Then, we add the virus to multiple wells in the top row of the plate to create replicates, which is crucial for achieving reliable and reproducible results in our analysis. Next, we proceed with a series of tenfold dilutions, working our way down the plate. Next, we inoculate these dilutions onto cells that were seeded the previous day and are currently being incubated. We then carefully transfer the virus dilutions from the bottom of the dilution plate down to the corresponding wells on the cells plate. After this, we return the plate to the incubator to allow the virus time to replicate. When we see that the cells are clearly infected, a timing that varies depending on the virus we're working with, it's time to wrap up the assay. First, we gently remove the media from the cell's plate. Then, we need to fix the cells to the well of the plate to preserve their current state and stain them with crystal violet to properly visualize them. This dye penetrates and colors the cells in the wells, highlighting their presence distinctly. The wells that appear light or clear indicate where the cells have succumbed to the virus. These are the wells we count as infected. It's a clear visual guide to understanding the extent of the infection. The next step in our process is to meticulously score the wells. We're looking for signs of infection, which are typically indicated by the absence of cells or disrupted patches in the monolayer. This is where the crystal violet staining becomes invaluable. It helps us clearly identify which wells have been compromised by the virus. If any results are unclear or require further examination, we take a closer look under the microscope to ensure accuracy in our observations. After scoring the wells, the next phase is analysis. However, the analytical part of the TCID-50 assay is complex and deserves thorough explanation. We'll cover the analysis in the next video, looking at the methods, calculations, and interpretations of the data. We've taken a close look at how the TCID-50 assay is done, but there's always more to uncover. If you're into virology and enjoyed this video, make sure to follow our channel for more straightforward science content.